hostels. Hi. Hello. Hi, how's Come on in. <laughs> Hello, I'm Toby. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Bradford. Thanks. It's lovely to meet you. You can interview me in bed. <laughs> I never get nervous about the amount of people. The only thing I'm afraid of is is not delivering. Um, and that's a bit, I mean, I think there's, unless you're a total, um, if you're, unless you're just totally off your rocker, as an artist or musician, you really want to please people. I mean, part of it's about pleasing yourself. Um, and of course, I want it to sound good for myself. I want to enjoy what I'm doing. But I mean, I definitely want them to be having a good time. I want, I want you know, and it's, it's funny probably to hear that from me because our music might seem a little, you know, odd or boring to some people or strange but I feel like people can relate to it and I feel like that was the feeling that I had tonight that was really magical was like when there would be a burst of noise or something I would see people kind of bend back a little bit and ex like it was kind of an ecstatic energy and interaction which is really unique and I mean I can't really describe how it feels I mean I guess preachers of large congregations might know. It's like to have, it felt like everyone was on our side. I woke up this morning, I opened the, the electric blinds. Can I demonstrate? Yeah, yeah, please. Primavera? I can't even begin to describe how much I love this festival. I'm, this is neat. I mean, it is, honestly, for a musician like me, to come here is honestly like paradise on earth. It's so relaxing. I love ATP. You know, they have a stage here. Pitchfork Festival is great. Total Darkness. They have a stage here. Those are my top three favorite festivals. Oh, wait, wait, let's, oh. you know, I'm, I'm very, very partial to Barcelona. This is like visuals for a show. You might want to consider this. I know. I miss Michael Nyman tonight. Who I was he was incredible, actually. Did, yeah. What did he play? Um, he did an absolute retrospective of all his stuff, actually. Did it's he do diverse. decay music? Uh, he did, yeah, he did some of that, yeah, which is pretty incredible. I think a lot of people wonder if I'm making mistakes. I sometimes change around verses, and sometimes I just ditch lyrics and improvise. <gasps> That's sometimes good, but sometimes pretty bad. It's a hit and miss, isn't it? Hits and misses. But. Yeah, I mean, I always try and re-evaluate this song all, every time we play it. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but when you're playing it like 60 nights in a row, mm. over and over. But how else to keep it fun, you know? And keep the song alive. Everyone always asks us where the name Deer Hunter comes from. And the truth is, I, don't, I hate band names. I didn't name the band. One fun thing we do is a lot of times, if interviews keep going in that direction of like, what does this mean? What does this mean? I, I try to start making up stories. We say that our songs are like little deers. <laughs> oh wait, it gets better. And then when we go into the recording studio, we hunt them. And then we stuff them <laughs> and hang their heads on the walls. And then what do you have? Your songs are no longer running wild and free. But now they're just these ornaments. Since we don't like deer hunters, because we like the deers, we try and keep the deers out in the wild. So we keep the songs out in the wild. I told this to somebody once, and they were just like, <laughs> very good, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, then and I'm like, I can't believe that this is getting bought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They walk but it is true. Yeah, yeah. I 
dad raised me to believe that mayonnaise was the food of communists. <laughs> and uh, there were several things that he did this with. Um, if he didn't like something, it was it was communist. <laughs> so that's pretty. And of course, you know, in high school, I was like, okay, well, then I'm gonna eat mayonnaise. But I still couldn't because it nauseated me. But I was I started reading Karl Marx. And my dad was just like, oh. But I got over that, and then I got into guitar solo. just want to be the best band we can be, you know, and I want longevity. But I don't want to beat a dead horse or deer. Flog a dead deer. Flog a dead deer. I see someone like Neil Young is someone to really admire and respect him because his age is meaningless. Radiohead are a great example, you know, where they always are moving forward. They don't look back, but at the same time, they they give their fans what they want. You know? Could you not enjoy playing to 10,000 people, you know? I don't expect it all the time, but it's like, it's such a treat, you know? And I guess I'm still at the age where it's not taken for granted. It's still like a beautiful, wild kind of, uh, it's like a birthday was when you were a kid, you know? Yeah.